A question on the discriminant of a quadratic and this question here asks us about this particular quadratic and it asks us to deal with the roots and the roots of a quadratic what they are is something we need to know and you'll notice this question and this is common to a lot of discriminant questions it's not asking us for the roots themselves but it's asking us to consider their nature and this is what we will just briefly talk about before we look at this question. Real and equal roots, it says. Now, what this means, if we think of quadratics, just imagine drawing the quadratic. Many of you will be familiar with the general shape. Often looks like that. And the roots, what we call the roots, are these points here. The values of x that create 0 when it goes in the function, those are roots. And this would be a typical quadratic with two real roots. The idea of a quadratic with no real roots, along the way we start talking about complex roots, but for our purposes here, for looking at real numbers, numbers on the ordinary number line, then real roots, two there and none there. Of course, we might also get the situation where the quadratic hits, and but it doesn't cross and we'll just get one point there where it zeroes. So two zeroes and we've got two real roots, real roots at zero and we would call them distinct or unequal roots, two different numbers. This one, no roots, no real roots, there's complex roots there, something we won't go into now, so no real roots and this one, we would, well we, we don't normally talk about a single root, what we talk about is equal roots. So we still imagine that it's got two but they've become the same one. So equal roots there. The final piece of this puzzle, if you have a quadratic, many of you will be familiar with the idea of solving it with the quadratic formula. And if we go ahead and use the quadratic formula, let's quickly generate an equation. What about this? What if we had x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0? We'd look at this, we'd say a, b, c. We'd say a is 1x squared, b is 1x there, and c is 2. And we'd solve it, and we'd say x equals minus b plus or minus root b squared 1 minus 4ac is 8 over 2a and then we hit a problem because we get square root of minus 7 the calculator doesn't like it we don't like it we can't do it and what we've hit here is we've hit at what we call a negative discriminant it's that section there that's revealed the problem in fact this is suggesting that I'm not going to be able to work this out there's going to be no roots and it was this thing here that showed me. And that there, that is the discriminant of a quadratic. And so we can pretty much use this to identify what we call the nature of the roots. The discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac. No roots and b squared minus 4ac, as we saw a minute ago, will be negative. No square root, no roots. b squared minus 4ac, if it gives us no problem, greater than zero, two answers, two real roots. Square roots can be positive, negative, hence two real roots. This one, the sitting on the fence situation, neither positive nor negative, when it equals zero, the discriminant disappears and the roots minus b over 2a plus or minus zero, no variation, same answer. So we've got the discriminant of a quadratic and we don't need to go ahead and work out the roots but if we test the b squared minus 4ac we know immediately what we're looking at. Let's go back to our question. Here what we're asked for is real unequal roots and so we are looking for this situation. Let's go ahead and sort this out. Our quadratic here, we have an a. 
1x squared, we have a b, it's 2p, and we have a c, 10 minus 3p. We are looking for a case of the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, to be greater than 0. Let me go ahead and put these in. b squared. 4a is 1, c is 10 minus 3p. I want this to be greater than 0. 4p squared minus 40 minus minus plus 12p greater than 0. Divide through by 4 and just turn this around a bit. Oops, can't divide by 4. Let's have another go. Divide by 4, p squared. 3p minus 4, sorry, minus 10, and I want this to be greater than 0. Quadratics, I seem to have a, it's a bit of a confusion sometimes. This, I seem to have a quadratic and a quadratic, but remember, I'm just looking for values of p that are going to feed back to my original problem. Um, quadratics greater than 0, first thing I need to do is ask myself when it is 0. Uh, it's no point with quadratics trying to think greater than 0 before you know critical values. When is it 0? So I'm just going to factorise this thing. Factorising, remember, a very nice, neat way to find zeros. If you can't factorise, you have to use the formula. Hopefully we don't have to do that here. P and P, 2 and 5, and what have we got? We've got plus 5P, minus 2P. And so if we're thinking about this particular expression here, it would zero when P was 2, and it would zero when P was minus 5. So I've got to ask myself what happens in the sections either side. And I think pretty quickly what I'm going to spot is that this expression is positive here. Between minus 5 and 2, it becomes negative, and then it becomes positive again. I want it to be positive, which means that I'm after the p down here, minus 5. That makes this expression greater than 0. And it's greater than 0 at this point, so p greater than 2. So what I'm looking for here is my original problem. If I use p less than minus 5 or p greater than 2, then the discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac, will be positive and I will have real unequal roots. So my solution to all this is that those values provide me with a positive discriminant and real unequal roots. Job done.